Hey, so guys, I quit being a real estate agent, not today, a long time ago. I just myself had not realized it. But if you're a real estate agent and you're suffering in the way you're operating your individual business, or if you're not able to give clients value, or if you're a buyer or a seller who's tired of the way agents are working in Dubai all the world over, or if you've been screwed over, then you got to watch this video. Why real estate agents are not able to deliver the value that you expect them to deliver and why I long time ago quit being a real estate agent. Okay. And instead chose to be, I'm going to tell you what I chose to be, but before I do look, if you're looking to actually purchase a property in Dubai or sell a property, there is a link below hit it watch the video of my watch the series of my video where i explain how you can work with me and hit the like subscribe and bell icon show real fast welcome back so I hadn't realized it myself, but a long time ago, uh, this is around circa 2015, 16 rather, I quit being a real estate agent and instead I chose to become an advisor. I'll give you a little bit of a backstory why I quit operating like a regular real estate agent. What I realized with my clients, the way I like to work, so you got to understand my background, I come from a business school, my mentors taught me to give value. And they said, there's one principle in life. You take away value from the table in direct proportion, or sometimes not in direct proportion, but you do have to bring value to the table and then you take a lot of value away, okay? That's what they said. And I kind of followed that principle. And I think it still is true loosely, right? Sometimes you might get blessed and you, know, you don't need to do nothing and you inherit a billion dollars and that's great. Or you walk into a billion dollars and that's great. Or the guy who actually bought Bitcoin at less than a dollar, that's great. All for it. I hope I have the same experiences and I'm rooting for the guys who have that. But let's talk about the guys who are operating as, as real estate agents. Back in 2016, uh, I discovered that I could not give the value that I wanted to give to my clients and I could not get people to value the service that I give them. And I'll give you this one example. This is one of my clients who was engaged with me and we had a very good relationship, great relationship, okay? I was actually touring almost all of Dubai for him uh, and this one particular specific property that he, he wished to buy. And I was doing the best I could, uh, or at least that's what I understood. And this was not the first property that he was about to purchase. And I think I'd put in about a week, two weeks, maybe three weeks worth of my time going all around Dubai, had a great car, I think I had like a Range Rover at that time, and so on and so forth. And lo and behold, I think on a Monday morning, he gives me a call and he says, hey Fad, uh, like the guy really liked me, still likes me, we're still on good terms right now at the moment, but he's like, you know, we walked into this open house on this new villas that were being built and hey, I'd like you to actually have a look and oversee the documentation. Well, I'm not a lawyer. At that time, I was operating as an agent. My fees comes out from when you actually make the bloody purchase. Not before, not after. That's how most agents work in the market, right? So me not being a lawyer, I'm not actually supposed to be looking through documentation that actually protects you. Go hire a lawyer, pay him 5, 10, 15, 20,000 dirhams. Now, obviously in the Dubai market, most deals are actually conducted by agents and we with 15 years plus experience, generally carry the deal forward and can actually sometimes give you some comments on some clauses, not legal advice, but comments, right? So you wanted me to actually go through the paperwork. I call the developer, the developer's like, fine, we can give you a commission because, you know, if you bring us a buyer, but my buyer was very shy. He didn't want to bring it to the developer's knowledge that he was working exclusively with me. And he said, look, we're going to be buying something else. You will be helping us on that. But at that stage, you know, maybe I was not mature enough to actually handle the shock of the situation, right? Uh, because I'd given in a lot of my time, blood, sweat, and actual money. I had invested money. As I said, I had a great car, my time, 
my fuel, my, you know, all the things that I was doing to actually help this client buy a good property, right? So that gave me a great lesson, right? Even if a buyer or a seller comes to us and we put in a lot of hours arranging viewings, it can take anywhere between, you know, two to three hours for anywhere between two to three hours in the field because we need to sort out a lot of fake listings, uh, bullshit agents, agents who have listings that are clickbait, so on and so forth, okay? Now, what ended up happening, I realized that the way the market is operating, it's a zero sum game, okay? The agent either must lose for the buyer or seller to win, or the buyer or seller must lose for the agent to win. And that's how a lot of the agents, about 90, 95% of the agents were approaching the market. And that's not how I approach the market. That's not how I want to approach the market. I want to approach it as one, one. The agents can win, and the buyers and the sellers can also win so that the buy and the market win. So what did I do? I found a solution. I found a magic bullet, okay? I would meet the client and I would explain to them my expertise and give them a lot of value for free in advance. I would explain what I would do for them. I would give them a lot of free value. I still remember one client of mine, I think he was looking for a rental at that stage and it's a long story, but I need to share this with you because what ended up happening was this client wanted to go start seeing villas, okay? And it was a rental at that time, uh, but it was a referral, so I was doing one of those rentals for this client. And what ended up happening is this client, while he wanted to rent this villa, was moving out of, I think, a two or a three bedroom apartment. And I said, look, just give me half an hour of your time. Let's just talk what kind of villa that's going to suit you, how many bedrooms, etc., etc. Let me understand a little bit more. And the guy was very adamant. No, just show me some villas. And I said, look, I don't work like that. I'd like to sit with you for 45 minutes, I think I promised him. And so we went to a cafe, we sat down, and he said, you know, I knew him from before, but he was like, Father, the clock's ticking. Show me the value you were supposed to bring to this meeting. So I go through my tenant consultation slash buyer consultation understand his requirements very deep. That takes about 20, 25 minutes. And I give him a lot of feedback on what would work, what would not work. So while I'm doing this, he's understanding that like Fad's saving me tons of time from the field. If I actually went in there and started looking at villas with different agents, then I'd be giving them feedback and I'd be telling agent, look, look, this one's not good, this one's not good, this one's not good, this one, and it's a waste of time. And at the end, that stage we started looking at the numbers okay so i just wanted him to be prepared on what would it take for him to close on a villa and how much he, he could expect to actually spend over a year because i think maybe in his apartment right now he was paying about 180,000 dirhams or 150 i don't remember many many years ago eight years ago but moving to a villa which would mean grass that needs to be uh, fed watered gardener that needs to be brought in every day of the week or every couple of days more electricity because the area is bigger you know uh if there's a pool then pool etc etc uh the original move would actually cost him right so there's agency fee the registration with the electricity and water authority is double that than compared to what you would pay for the registration on an apartment. I think we did the numbers and it looked like he would be paying in the first day about 260 to 280,000 dirhams, okay? Do you know what he did? He was right now at the 160 stage, at 140 stage, or 180 stage, I don't remember. He looked at me, huh, Devron? He looked at me and he said, he said he could not afford the villa. And he could not afford to move to the villa, right? So I said to him, okay, should we just end the meeting here and we go home? And he's like, yeah, it's okay. So I technically saved him a lot of time and myself tons of time. But what, because what would have generally happened with a client like this, you would show them villas. After he sees the first ones, he would say, hey, could you show me like this one more of this type? And then you'd show him more. And then on the third viewing, he would be like, I like this one, let's close. And then that stage he's going to ask you or at the second stage viewing, he's going to start asking you what other costs are entailed on the upkeep of the villa. Most people work like this. Some people are like, you know what, I've got 300,000. I'm going to spend it all. I don't really care. Now, what ended up happening? And then what would happen at that stage is this person would then start saying to me, 
oh, well, I think I've changed my mind. So what I did is I just preempted the whole situation. And how did I create a win-win? Is when I do the consultation, I would talk to the buyers or the tenants and say, listen, I'm happy to work with you on an exclusive basis, provide all my services. I've been in the market X number of years. Trust me, I can do the best for you. But there is a cost involved. So about six, seven years ago, I used to only charge 3,000 dirhams, which I would then adjust for them with the actual agency fee that they pay anyway. So they're not actually, at that time, they weren't paying me extra. Now I charge extra, which I don't adjust with the agency fee, okay? If you want to reach out to me, watch the series on how to work with me. There is a link below on you, how you can actually set up your time to reach out and work with me. My team and my members would love to work with you. Hit the like, subscribe and bell icon. Don't forget that, right? Now, what I've actually done now to become an advisor, so I'm not running around as an agent where I need to service 10 different clients and none of them are getting the level of service I'd like to give. I require an upfront payment for you to start working with me. Now, I adjust, I used to well adjust that payment with the total agency fee, and it's not the total agency fee that you're paying anyway. But at the time of closure, obviously you bring me whole, but I then dedicate services because I can take care of myself and my team. I can take care of you. You know, you must have heard that famous saying, love yourself first, because if you love yourself first, you can then, then love others completely and fully, right? If you don't love yourself, you can't love others uh, completely and fully. So at that stage, I realized, look, for me to give unbiased advice, I need to be exclusively engaged with the buyer. I need to have their commitment to my me and I, so I can commit my services to them. So that's how I quit being a real estate agent and I became an advisor. Look, I don't work for you. I work with you. I partner with you. I, if you're under 30, I'm going to be mentoring you and advising you. If you're over 30, I'm advising you and brainstorming on making sure that I'm bringing the best solutions from the market in terms of real estate to you to choose from, all right? And that's how I quit being a real estate agent and instead chose to become a trusted advisor. There's a link below, you can hit me up. If you would like to work with me on my team, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and bell icon. Ciao for now.